Hey, what's up? It's Wick for Xiaomi Fi, and today we're looking at XJimmy or Shimmy's Mogo Pro, a wireless HD projector. Is it any good? Well, let's find out. Let's go. So here it is. In the box, you'll find a warranty card, an instruction manual, the power adapter, which in my case came with the UK and US size plugs in a separate box, a remote controller, and last but not least, the projector itself. And wow, the first thing I noticed is how much smaller this projector is than I had anticipated it would be. It really just fits in the palm of my hand, which is uh, pretty cool and actually quite convenient. So the Mogo Pro is only 14 and a half by 10 by nine and a half centimeters in size, and it comes weighing in at 900 grams. On the inside, it's got an AM Logic T950X2 processor and a Mali G31 GPU. It's got two gigs of memory and 16 gigs of internal storage running Android 9, and it's got a 10,400 milliamp hour battery that should give you around two to four hours of watch time without having it plugged in. It uses around 55 watts of power and it can work with anything from 100 to 240 volts at 50 or 60 hertz, so you should be able to use it globally. Its noise levels are below 30 dB, so that's really barely audible, but what is audible are the internal 3 watts Harman Kardon speaker drivers that give you stereo sound. It projects at a full HD 1080p resolution, but it can be fed a 4K resolution source though. Its brightness is 300 NC lumens, which is not spectacularly bright, but we'll get to that in a second. It's got 40 degree horizontal and vertical keystone correction. It's got dual band Wi-Fi supporting both 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi networks. And it's got Bluetooth 4.2 and 5, whatever that means. On the back side, it's got a power port, HDMI port, USB port, and a 3.5 millimeter audio output port and an on off button that kind of looks like a record button. On top, it's got the controls to increase or decrease the volume and a start and pause button to pause currently playing content. On the front, it's got uh, its LED projection lens and a lens to measure the distance for automatic focus adjustments. On the bottom, it's got a typical 1420 UNC tripod mount that allows you to place it on a tripod or perhaps hang it upside down from the ceiling, which is always nice to see. So how is it in use? I've been using this one for over a month and a half now and the image quality is definitely quite all right. I can project images from 76 centimeters to around two and a half meters in size. I personally noticed that I like it the most at around one and a half to two meters as it's quite big, but still very sharp as well. I've been mostly watching YouTube, which comes as a pre-installed app and this worked fine. Comes with the Google Play Store, so it allows you to download any additional apps that you might want. I could download additional apps like uh, Disney Plus, for example. But whatever I've tried, I did not manage to get Netflix on it. But then I actually did manage to install a version of Netflix on it, but it is hidden in the system file, so it's not very easy to access. So after that, I installed XTV Manager. Basically, all I have to do is open up XTV. The first app is Netflix and it worked. So in the end, I actually did manage to get Netflix to work. You just have to know how, but once it works, it's just fine, actually. Additionally, you can also load content from a thumbstick or external hard drive when connecting that over the USB port. So I've been trying that, but I did not manage to play things off my SSD drive as it required the drive to be formatted. However, I did manage to play things over a USB stick using an additional app that I used as a file explorer, but that USB stick is a little bit slower and it could, for example, not handle playing 4K content. That was a little bit of a disappointment. You can also use the HDMI port to connect any external source, whether that's a DVD player, a laptop, or a Nintendo Switch. And playing Switch for me was fine, as I mostly been playing some Mario Kart or Super Mario, and with that, it actually worked all right. There didn't seem to be any noticeable lag for me, but I am not a pro Smash Bro player who might notice that type of lag a lot more. The Mogo Pro is supposed to output everything at 60 frames per second, and there's no real way for me to check that, but as that's also the frame rate of the Nintendo Switch, to me, this just seemed to work fine. So after using it for a while, what do I think? Well, first of all, I love the size. It's super compact, it's easy to put in a backpack, bring along and use outside or at a friend's place, for example. It's really convenient. I really love that it's this small and it's got that internal battery, so it allows you to just bring it along and use it outside without any power source. 
The picture quality and brightness both aren't the very best in comparison to others, but when it's dark, it is quite good enough. I did notice that when you watch a movie with darker scenes, it's pretty hard to see like the detailed action, especially when it's very dark. So I had to increase the brightness from the settings a little bit, and that actually did help a little bit. When using it with games like I did with the Switch, all of the scenes are a lot brighter and that just worked perfectly fine on this one. I did find that during the day it works really good when I uh, close the blinds or curtains, but if you have pure daylight shining into the room, it's definitely a lot harder to see, as you can see in the video right here. Um, but if you would have a projection screen, the experience should be quite a lot better. I really like that it's silent and the onboard audio is quite good as well. You can hear that the speaker quality is definitely decent. The only downside I found is that the lower content, so the bass and the lower mids don't come through as loud as with bigger speaker drivers. So the low end and the bass are not as great as I would have hoped for. Is it really that good? Well, let's find out. Let's go. So I've looked at the Mi 10 Pro and the Mi 10 Lite, and now I've got the Mi 10 Ultra in this super big box that marks Xiaomi's 10 year anniversary. One comparison that I have to make is with the Feng Mi or 4 Movie Dice Wireless Projector that I've also reviewed here on the channel a while back. The big advantage of the Mogo Pro is its size, as it's ridiculously compact. It's a lot easier to bring along for that matter. The image quality is not that different either, but the 4 movie would surely win in the brightness uh, department having a 550 ANSI lumens projection. So that one will definitely consume a lot more battery, but it's also quite a lot brighter. So they basically both have their pros and cons. The insane charging speed and uh, let's see how it does. Is it really that good? Well, let's find out. Let's go. So I've looked at the V10 Pro. So overall, there's really quite some things that I really like about the Mogo Pro. As it's that portable and easy to bring along, it is a type of projector you actually would bring along. And that's cool. The Mogo Pro came out internationally for around 550 US dollars, which I think is a very good price. And I've put down some links in the description below this video in case you wanna go and check that out. So that's about it for the Mogo Pro. And this is the first time that I'm actually reviewing any XGMI product. And they're not a so-called Xiaomi ecosystem company, but their projectors are being sold on the Xiaomi Yopin store for years now. So it is kind of relevant to what I'm doing here. So what do you guys think of the XGMI or Shimi Mogo Pro? Let me know down here in the comment section what you guys think. And uh, don't forget to leave a little like below this video to show me that you've liked it. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, know that you probably should because I'm doing a lot of videos right here on the Xiaomi Fi channel. As always, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see y'all soon. Peace.